Welcome to my shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. In this tutorial, I will show you how to do a complete rebuild on a Marvel Shoveler carburetor off of the 8N Ford. In my hands is a TSX33. There's an ID tag right here, but if you have a 33 or a 241, you'll be able to follow along. Behind me is a 8N Ford, but these carburetors are found on 8N, 9N, or 2N Ford tractors. I'm gonna do some disassembly and we'll pick up the pace a little bit. We'll slow down once we go on to reassembly. What I'm going to do is take the four screws off of the perimeter of the carburetor, but first I'll remove this adjustment needle here. The throttle shaft is removed by taking these two screws out of the butterfly and then the plate comes off and the shaft pulls out the side. That same procedure is followed down here for the choke. Inside we'll see a needle, see a butterfly, we'll disassemble all of that, clean it, and then we'll get back to work putting it back together. There are two jets inside here. This is for your idle and then your main jet is down here. These little jets are kind of hard to get out. They can be really tight. Um, these ones came out pretty easily for me. You can just use a small screwdriver in the lid there. And then for the bowl of your carburetor, you'll need a long screwdriver that has a small tip on it like this. This screwdriver was, belonged to my grandpa and now I have it and it's the magic one for these Ford carburetors. Let me shine a light down in there and look at that jet in there and see if, yeah, looks like I've got it loose. I just got to get the, my screwdriver on the head and pull it out of there. There it is. Okay. There's that jet. You want to get both of those out because you get new ones in your kit to replace with. The next thing I'm going to do is I'll take this um, plug out the bottom for the drain and then I'm going to thoroughly clean my carburetor. I'm going to use a can of carb cleaner that has the uh, long nozzle on the end so I can get through all the passageways. I'll wear gloves and safety glasses. I'll spray it down, follow with a blow off nozzle on my air compressor, spray it a second time and use the blow off nozzle a second time as well so that my carburetor is thoroughly cleaned. If you want to sandblast, you can. I'm not gonna sandblast this one because it looks like it's in pretty good shape, but do whatever you need to do in order to get your carburetor thoroughly cleaned before you start putting new parts in. When you are ready to rebuild your own carburetor, there are four different choices of kits that you can purchase. Let me talk about each of the kits so that you can make a decision based off of how involved you want to get on your repair. This is our most simple kit here. This just basically is new gaskets, needle, and seat. Then the next upgrade is the gaskets, needle, and seat, but it comes with a new throttle shaft. Here is our complete kit. This comes with both a choke and throttle shaft, a new emulsion tube. Notice though that you do not get the new doors. You do not get the screws for the perimeter. So while this is a very good kit, it's not the best that we offer. The best is this comprehensive kit. This is what I'm using in the video and you can see all of the pieces that are um, included here. You get the new choke and um, throttle doors or butterflies new main and idle needles, new emulsion tube, screws for the perimeter. This piece here, the fuel inlet is really important with that screen on the end. This piece comes in the comprehensive kit, but it's also offered individually in case you buy a lower grade kit and wanna add just this piece with it. Um, you get a new drain or plug, depending on what option you wanna use for your carburetor. So if you want to do a very thorough job on your repair, this comprehensive kit is the route that you will go.
Other parts back here are offered individually. You could consider purchasing a new fuel line if you need one. This has the good bend in it to get the fuel line off of the manifold for safety reasons. It's better than a rubber fuel line. We have two different kinds of fuel caps if you need to replace yours for your uh, gas tank. Here you can purchase a brand new sediment bowl assembly that comes all together like this, or if yours only needs the gasket and screen replaced, you could purchase just a new gasket and screen. This is really affordable if you just wanna add it to your cart and update this if your sediment bowl tends to be leaky. The float is always sold separately, so if you wanna add that to your cart, add it independently of your kit. And lastly, here is a air cleaner tube if you need a new rubber for your connection there on to your carburetor. So all of these parts are available on my website. It is farmtractorrepair.com. Your purchase on my site helps to fund future tractor tutorials. I realize that you can purchase ADEN carburetor kits in many places. However, we appreciate your business and it helps us to do more videos for you into the future. I have my carburetor thoroughly cleaned. If you want to paint your carburetor, now's the time to do so. Just flip your two halves over so that you only get paint on the outside, not inside your carburetor. I'm not gonna paint mine. I'm ready to just move on and put new parts in. You can see up here at my throttle shaft, I already have my new packing in there. There's a small white felt piece and then this brass cover goes over top and you just tap it in with a ball peen hammer like this one. Then you can slide your shaft in. I like to put a little bit of grease on there and then it will go through. If for any reason yours doesn't go through easily like mine does, then you could clean it up with a Scotch-Brite pad, nothing too abrasive, just to clean that up a little bit. This is directional, so make sure that you have yours in the correct configuration like mine is. And then you're ready to put your butterfly in. Notice that there's numbers on the top. Those always go up facing me and then I'll line that up with the holes. You can see that there. There's two little screws and I like to use a self-starting screwdriver to get one started. I'll start the other one and then I'll tighten them both up. This is the idle set screw and it has a spring that goes around it and then it screws right here into the throttle shaft. So I'm gonna get this started with my fingers here and then I'll tighten it up with a screwdriver we're gonna tighten this all the way until it reaches this little peg that's there. And then I'm gonna watch the butterfly. And as soon as we start to see that butterfly crack open is when I'll stop. So I'm gonna keep screwing this down until it reaches the peg. Now I'm ready to watch the butterfly and I'll know what the proper adjustment is once I see that move, just like that. I saw it move right there. And that's what you're watching for as well. We're gonna flip this over and then you can see that there is the spot for this little idle jet right there. There's two jets in your kit and this is the shorter of the two. The taller one goes in the bowl. So I'm gonna tighten this up and I think I should choose a screwdriver that's slightly smaller here. There we go. I wanna make sure that I tighten this all the way, not overly tight, but make sure that it's really in there as it should be like so. Next, I'm going to put my gasket and venturi on. The venturi is directional, so let me pull that out of there and show you the way that it is so that you can get yours in the same way. The gasket does go on at this point. Don't uh, forget to put your gasket on or you'll have to back up. Here is my new needle and that has that small gasket underneath it. I'm gonna tighten this up as much of the way with my fingers as I can and then I'm gonna use a scraper to go tighten it up the rest of the way. The scraper will reach across the notches on my seat here. Our screwdriver doesn't work as well. Then I'm ready to drop my needle in here. So here's my needle and it has a little clip like this and that goes around the groove that's right there in the needle, as you can see. And then this goes over top of the float so that it just kind of suspends the needle I drop it down into the seat, and then I have a float pin that slides all the way across. I'm gonna even that gap out there, just like that. Next, I wanna make sure that the pontoons on my float are straight across. The directions say to have a quarter inch here, and mine's pretty close to right on the money for a quarter inch, and they're straight across, so I like that. If you need to bend your pontoons up or down, just bend it right here, ever so slightly be careful with your float. 
I chose to put a brand new flow on my carburetor. My old one um, looked pretty bad. If your flow is dented, if it's corroded, or even if you shake it and you hear like sediment inside, then you definitely need to replace your float. If yours looks okay, it is a part that some people choose to reuse. So that can be your own call on the float there. Next, I'm gonna put my passageway in the bottom of the bowl for my main jet. I'm gonna use this long screwdriver again. So let me drop that down in there first and take a look at it, make sure that I got it in there straight. Yes. So we're ready to just tighten it up with this tool. I gotta make sure I'm on the head and then tighten it up just like so. Then the emulsion tube will drop over it. Notice that there's a gasket on there and then it goes right down in there and screws down. This choke shaft configuration is a little bit tricky because this shaft has a slit in it and then there's the door with the spring. But this is what it's gonna look like when it's inside the tractor. You can see that that door goes through the shaft. You take that off of there and then we'll put it in the hole. So here, I'm gonna slide my choke shaft through. See that I have the spring on the end. This round part is gonna go over the dowel and then I put this in line with the um, flat side of my um, shaft here. And then I slide this back towards me, just like that. And then you can see that this spot that has the groove rests on the dowel there. With that in place, then my choke is gonna operate as it should. Next thing I'm gonna do is slide this door in here. When I'm finished, this door where you see the spring and the flap will be outside of the carburetor. So let me Drop this down in here, just making sure I got that going the right way. This is why I showed you the shaft outside because it's hard. I gotta be able to see it instead of the camera. So you need to follow these steps for your own choke shaft be because if your tractor is starting hard, this choke door is gonna make a difference. I've seen the spring be broken and that will cause the tractor to not run as it should. So you can see I have my door in place there. That looks good. Then I have my little screws here on a self-starting screwdriver. So I'm gonna turn this up and put my screw in there. I'll get that side started and then I'll tighten it up. Once I have both of them started, then I'll go back and tighten them both up. For the bottom of your carburetor, your kit provides two options. This is a plug in my hand. The other option is a drain like this one. You can use whatever you prefer. I'm choosing to put the uh, plug in the bottom of mine. So I'm just gonna tighten this up all the way. I'm holding this because my emulsion tube is in the carburetor and I don't want to damage it. So with that tight, I'm ready to put my two halves together. See here that I have the, uh, my float pin evened out so it's not gonna get hung up when I drop the bowl on. Notice that I set that on gently so that I didn't damage the pontoons. Then I'm gonna flip this over and in the comprehensive kit, I have new screws and washers for the perimeter of the carburetor. I'm going to start each one a little bit and then go back around and tighten them. Not tighten one, tighten the second one, etc. My main needle has a screw and a gasket on it, and then I'm ready to drop it down in there. I'm just using my fingers to tighten this up. Once it bottoms out, I will back out two full turns. That's the adjustment that we're gonna start with. We can make other fine tune adjustments when it's on the tractor. So that's one turn, that's two turns out. I'm gonna follow those same steps here with my idle screw, but this time I'll just come back out one turn after I bottom out. My fuel inlet is brand new with a clean screen on it and it's ready to go in. I'm gonna put a little bit of sealant on here first. This is um, gas and oil resistant, so it's a good choice for this application. And then get that started with my fingers. And then I'm gonna use a wrench here to tighten it up. I'm gonna put my wrench on the edge here, not on the middle to turn that around because in the middle it's not as strong. So I'm just gonna turn that at the edge until it's facing up and then I'll be ready to put it onto the tractor. My carburetor is onto the tractor. I made sure that all the remains of my old gasket were removed before I put it back together with a new gasket into place. I don't have my tube on here because I wanna make sure that the carburetor doesn't leak. 
I'm just gonna start it up and make some fine tune adjustments. First, I'll test it on an idle, and if it needs an idle adjustment, I'll do that right here on this screw. That'll take the flutter out of the idle. Then I'm going to rev it up, make sure that it revs well. If it doesn't, I'll make an adjustment right here. So my tractor is in neutral. It's safe for me to start it right here. Okay, so this is an idle. I like how it's idling right now. Let me rev it up. I'm gonna turn that out just a little bit more. I like that. That seems to have a better throttle response there. You can make some fine tune adjustments as you need to. When you make an adjustment, just turn it a quarter or maybe a half a turn at a time because a little bit does make a big difference on this carburetor. I hope that this tutorial is helpful to you and that after watching it, you are ready to rebuild your own carburetor so that your 8N runs as nicely as mine does. Take a look on my channel. I have other videos on the N-Series Ford tractors that might be of benefit to you. Also, you can subscribe to my channel. There's a little button at the bottom where you can click to subscribe and you'll get a notification every time we release a new video. When you are ready to purchase parts, please do so on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. In addition to the Ford parts, we also have a nice selection of Ford licensed products for you to check out.